Anaconda versus Python, an epic battle of two of the largest snakes. This is going to be an interesting one. I am Mario and this is Animal Battle. The rules are pretty simple. In order to determine the winner of this animal battle, we will go over their six main characteristics. Agility, attack, defense, intelligence, bonus skill, and survival. After that, you are going to be the ones that will choose the winner of this battle, casting your votes in the comments. So make sure to watch the video until the very end to find out how to cast an eligible vote. Also, I'm going to announce the winner of the last episode between the beaver and the porcupine. That being said, Let's go to this episode's two contestants for the title The Best Animal in the World. It is important to note that when I say anaconda, I am referring to the largest species of anacondas and, as a matter of fact, the largest species of existing snakes, the green anaconda. As for the python, I think that a suitable representative would be the reticulated python, which is the longest snake species. Also, green anacondas are found in South America, whilst reticulated pythons live in South and Southeast Asia. As you can see, their areas do not overlap, so there is no way for these two snakes to meet in the wild. That being said, let's go right to their agility stats. Both the anaconda and the reticulated python are bulky snakes, and that means that they can't reach high speeds on land. They usually travel on land with a speed of 1.6 km per hour, so anyone should be able to outrun them. Still, the same can be said about their speed in the water. Having such a heavy body, the anaconda has adapted to an aquatic lifestyle. In water, it becomes a stealthy and sleek creature, capable of reaching a top swimming speed of 16 km per hour, which is quite an improvement. They can also hold their breath for long periods, being able to stay submerged for 10 minutes. The reticulated python is not lagging behind, as it is an excellent swimmer too. It has been reported far out at sea and has colonized many islands within its range. So what are their agility stats? While they are not remarkable, they are still pretty high for such large animals. Before going to their attack and defense stats, let's have a quick look at their bonus skills. So they have poor eyesight and hearing, but they can rely on their smell and touch and on their bonus ability to sense vibrations and heat, as many other snakes do. They are also pretty good at camouflage. The color pattern and coloration of reticulated pythons allow them to virtually disappear in their natural environment. The dark green skin with black oval patches on the anaconda's back allows it to blend in with the wet and dense vegetation. Furthermore, the anaconda has its eyes and nostrils set high on the head to pick above water without being noticed. A fun fact is that pythons have legs. Well, their legs are really small and don't have any use, but they are still interesting because they indicate pythons' evolution from lizards. Another fun fact is that if you gently click on or even smash the like button, the YouTube algorithm will think that my videos are actually decent and will recommend them to other people. Now let's see their bonus skill stats. Not bad. Do you know what comes next? The attack and defense stats. I have mentioned earlier that the green anaconda is the largest snake species, while the reticulated python is the longest snake species. Anacondas weigh an average from 30 to 70 kilograms, and the females are actually considerably larger than males, reaching 4.6 meters in length on average. This length doesn't seem that impressive compared to the reports of 11 to 12 meter long anacondas, but the longest and heaviest anaconda registered so far measured 5.21 meters and 97.5 kilograms, which is still quite imposing. Reticulated pythons can weigh anywhere from 1 to 75 kilograms and measure from 1.5 to 6.5 meters. The current longest reticulated python measures 7.6 meters in length. As you can see, green anacondas are bulkier than reticulated pythons. In fact, the bulk of a 4.5 meter anaconda is comparable to that of a 7.4 meter reticulated python. What would you like to order, gentlemen? For you, Mr. Anaconda, I can recommend a taper, deer, capybara, caiman, or you might prefer a quick snack like smaller fish, birds, mammals and reptiles. The green anaconda will go for a capybara this time. Swimming stealthily with its head above water, it spots a group of capybaras hanging on the edge of a river. It will approach the unexpected animals and wait there. When the prey comes closer to drink or to forage for aquatic plants, the anaconda strikes. Just a minute. What was it that you wanted to have for dinner, Mr. Python? You can have a rodent as a snack, or you can have a more filling meal, 
like a civet, primate, or a pig. Like all pythons, the reticulated python is an ambush hunter, waiting until its prey wanders close enough for it to strike. Your hunting technique is quite interesting, but how do you actually kill your prey, gentlemen? I suppose you have highly potent venom, right? Well, both anacondas and pythons are not actually venomous. They do have an incredibly powerful and muscular body, and they use it to kill the prey by constriction. The snake will coil around its prey, and each time the prey breathes out, it will constrict even more. In this way, the prey will die from suffocation or by cardiac arrest caused by the limited blood flow. Either way, once the prey is caught in such a tight grip, its chances of escaping are low. The teeth of these two snake species are not adapted to eat their prey one bite at a time. That is why both the anaconda and the python have these weird adaptations, allowing them to swallow the whole prey. But how do I swallow prey larger than their head? Their jaws are quite unique. They have multi-hinged joints, which are incredibly flexible. The jawbone actually consists of two separate bones, linked by an elastic ligament. In this way, the snake can swallow prey two to three times wider than its head. Still, with no arms to push the food inside, they needed another strange adaptation. Both the anaconda and the python have six rows of backward-facing teeth, two on the bottom and four on the top of their mouth. Moving each row independently, their skulls basically walk over their prey and manage to pull it inside. And yeah, to keep them from suffocating while eating, they have evolved so that their trachea opens on the floor of their mouth rather than on the back of their throat. All of these strange adaptations allow them to eat really large prey. The eating process can take hours though, making them vulnerable during their feeding time, and it may take more than a week to digest it. On the positive side, once the snakes are full, they can go weeks or even months without eating. Adult anacondas have no natural predators, other than jaguars sometimes, or larger anacondas. Yeah, cannibalism is a thing in anacondas. The reticulated python should fear only larger predators like crocodiles. What is interesting is that although the anaconda is portrayed as a man-eating monster, there are no recorded cases of them killing humans. The reticulated python on the other side is quite notorious for killing people, with at least two reported cases of them eating humans. So yeah, you shouldn't really play around with these large constrictors. Their stats? So they have really high attack and defense stats, and Akandas having just slightly better defense stats due to fewer predators in its habitat. Now, let's quickly go over their intelligence stats. While both of these species are predators, they are also quite primitive reptiles, so their intelligence isn't exactly remarkable. Their instinct is enough for hunting. so their intelligence stats are not outstanding. And last, but certainly not least, let's talk about survival, because there's no point in having high stats overall if a species is going extinct. These species do not have to worry about going extinct soon, since reticulated pythons are classified by IUCN as a least concerned species, even after being hunted for their skin, traditional medicine, and for sale as a pet. There's no data on the global population of green anacondas, and it isn't listed on the IUCN red list. The anaconda will actually give birth to 20 to 40 live-born offspring, which is quite rare for reptiles and quite gross for me to show in this video. The newborn will be independent right away and will live up to 10 years in the wild and 30 in captivity. The reticulated python is more of a traditional reptile, laying 15 to 80 eggs, and the female will protect its eggs until they hatch. The hatchlings will live on average for 15 to 20 years, but can reach even 30 years. It is time for their final stats. As you can observe, they have quite decent stats, especially in the attack and defense departments. Also, their stats are quite similar, so this will be a close one. So, who is the winner? It is all up to you, because you can vote in the comments down below, writing hashtag anaconda or hashtag python to cast your vote. Make sure you write correctly, as this is the only way for me to accurately count the votes after the poll cards were removed. Also, feel free to share your opinions in the comments, and if you want to see more videos, subscribe to Earn From Animals. Now it is time to see the winner of a last animal battle between the beaver and the porcupine. So, after counting all the votes, the winner is… the beaver! It is a smart animal with a unique survival strategy. If you wanted the porcupine to win, don't be upset, because here, at them from animals, we love and respect all animals.
Once again, don't forget to cast your votes in the comments writing hashtag Anaconda or hashtag Python. I'd also like to thank my patrons for supporting me. And if you really love what I'm doing, you can also support me on Patreon to fill up at least with your name. Respect, animals.